Hi, let's talk about the urogenital triangle. In this video, we'll discuss the structures of the urogenital triangle with a particular emphasis on the structures of the superficial perennial space or superficial perennial pouch. So the urogenital triangle to review is the portion of the perineum which is bounded by the ischiopubic rami and separated from the anal triangle by the interischial line. Now this region of the perineum is going to be very complicated and contain a number of layers and structures within those layers. Much like most of the rest of the body, the most superficial layer is the skin and deep to the skin, we'll have the superficial fascia or the subcutaneous layer. And deep to the sub -Q will be the superficial perennial space. This space is going to include erectile tissues as well as muscles which surround those erectile tissues. Uh, those erectile tissues include the corpus cavernosum and corpus spongiosum. The cavernosum is going to be more lateral. The spongiosum is going to be more medial. And I just want to point out for a second that uh, illustrations are labeled, you know, female or male, but uh, we know that sex is not a binary, that these structures are going to exist upon a continuum. And so our language should be more inclusive than that. It should be more sexually polymorphic. And these are just labels of expediency. Now, upon these erectile uh, tissues, um, we can see specialized muscles. So laterally, on elements of the corpus cavernosum, we have uh, ischiocavernosus muscles. And on muscles of the corpus spongiosum, or on corpus spongiosum, we have the bulbospongiosus muscles. And we'll discuss those in a little greater detail shortly. But these are all within that superficial perennial space. The superficial perennial space is divided from the deep perennial space by the perennial membrane, which we can see here. And that deep perennial space is a very irregularly shaped space between the perennial membrane and the muscles of the pelvic floor or the, the levator ani muscles. So here is a uh, more detailed version of this. What we're looking at on the right hand side is a coronal slice um, through the perineum as well as uh, some of the, um, the subperitoneal uh, space inclusive of the urinary bladder. So we can see here's the urinary bladder inferiorly and here is the urethra so facing uh, superior in this case so let's take a look at some of these layers so here is the skin and deep to the skin is the sub q and that sub q is going to have a fatty layer to it sometimes called camper's fascia same as the camper's fascia lining the abdomen and through that camper's fascia in this particular illustration, we can see the round ligament of the uterus running through and inserting into the labium magus here. And then the deep layer of that subcutaneous layer is the colles fascia or the deep membranous layer there. The superficial perennial space is going to be deep to the, uh, the deep membranous fascia, and it's going to be superficial to this perennial membrane here. So we're talking about this space here. What's included in this space will be the erectile tissues, and here we can see the vestibular bulb, or we can see the vestibular bulbs here that would be flanking the uh, the vestibule of the vagina and surrounding the vestibular bulbs will be the bulbospongiosis muscles. The derivatives of the uh, 
corpus cavernosum. So in this case, they would be the the crura of the uh, the clitoris would be more lateral, and they're not included in this particular illustration. It's also um, in this particular level uh, that the uh, the muscles, uh, so bulbospongiosis and transverse perineal muscles, are going to um, deviate towards the uh, the midline and participate in the perineal uh, body. There are also, um, at least in um, assigned female at birth individuals, um, going to be uh, greater vestibular glands or Bartholin's glands. These are glands that we cannot see in this particular level, but are going to be associated with the inferior most extent of the vestibular bulbs. And these are going to secrete into the vestibule of the vagina and serve as a lubrication for that region. Then there's the perineal membrane and deep to that perineal membrane, we have the deep perineal space. Uh, that deep perineal space is going to be bounded by the pelvic diaphragm. So it is going to be quite uh, unique in its shape and include some of the compressor urethra muscles as well as in assigned male at birth individuals, the bulbourethral glands or the Cowper's glands. Bulbourethral glands and greater vestibular glands are homologous with one another. So an individual will either have greater vestibular or bulbourethral glands, and they serve the, uh, the same function to provide some form of lubrication. So let's take a, uh, a look at these erectile tissues and uh, associated muscles, keeping in mind that they are going to be uh, sexually polymorphous. There are two types of erectile tissues. Uh, there's the corpus cavernosum and the corpus spongiosum. The corpus cavernosum is paired uh, generally, uh, and so we refer to the two uh, portions of it is the corpora cavernosa muscles, and these are going to be more laterally distributed. So these are going to uh, form crura, or legs, and the crura are associated with the ischiopubic rami. So there's a crus, there is another crus. So here we have the crura of the clitoris, and here we have the crura of the penis. Medially, these crura are going to unite, um, and, and they unite along the midline, as we'll see. Um, and the crura are going to be covered by ischiocavernosus muscle. So here we can see the ischiocavernosus muscle there in association with the ischiopubic rami, or ramus, and there are the um, issue cavernosus muscles there. The corpus spongiosum is more of a midline structure. Um, it may be divided or it may be one uh, midline unit. So in, in the case of the vestibular bulbs, we can see that the corpus spongiosum happens to be divided here and flank either side of the vestibule of the vagina. It does come together to form the shaft or body of clitoris there. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry, I, I misspoke. It, it does come together to form uh, the glands clitoris. The glands is the most visible portion of the clitoris and colloquially is what uh, many people mistakenly refer to as the clitoris, but we can see that the clitoris is a much more uh, robust and varied structure here. Um, we can see um, over here, 
the uh, corpus spongiosum forms the bulb of the penis and that extends into the body or shaft of the penis and distally it will form the glands of the penis but that's that's not illustrated here we could also take a moment to uh, to note the greater vestibular glands those greater vestibular glands are found in association with the inferior portions of the vestibular bulbs. And again, they're going to drain into the vestibule of the vagina, like so. We can also see the bulbo uh, spongiosis muscle, bulbo spongiosis muscles, depending. Those bulbo spongiosis muscles are going to cover the derivatives of the corpus spongiosum and either the, the ischio cavernosus muscles or the bulbospongiosis muscles are going to apply pressure to those erectile muscles uh, to aid in tumescence. Now, here we can specifically look at the erectile muscles that are participating in the clitoris. So we've got the crura of the clitoris here that um, are formed of the corpora cavernosa. They come together along the midline and they fuse to form the body or the shaft of the clitoris. And then we have the corpus spongiosum forming vestibular bulbs. And then those Vestibular bulbs are going to come together along the midline to cap off the body of clitoris as the glands clitoris. So corpora cavernosa are the crura and body or shaft of clitoris, whereas corpus spongiosum are the vestibular bulbs and the glands clitoris. Um, both of these are going to be served by specialized branches of the internal pudendal artery, which is a branch of the internal iliac artery. And they're going to be uh, serviced, as well as the remainder of the perineum, by branches of the pudendal nerve. Now, all of this, uh, pudendal, pudendal, uh, that comes from the Latin Pudera, which means to be ashamed. Um, I can speak as an anatomist first and as a person second. Uh, these notions of any particular portion of the body uh, being shameful uh, really has no scientific merit to it. So uh, chin up and uh, don't uh, don't be ashamed of, of this particular region of, of your anatomy. Now let's look at the erectile tissues in the assigned uh, male at birth. So the corpora cavernosa are going to form the crura of the penis. Those crura of the penis are going to come together and unite as a portion of the shaft of the uh, of the penis. There's also um, a bulb of the penis. So that is corpus spongiosum. Um, and that bulb is going to unite with the crura of the penis. And the three elements here, crura of the penis and bulb of the penis, is known as the root of the penis. And that is a portion of the superficial perennial pouch. Beyond the corpus spongiosum will be a part of the body or the shaft of the penis. And um, laterally here, this is a good view, we can see there's the bulb of the penis. And we can see the corpus spongiosum 
taking an inferior position within, or a ventral position within the, uh, the shaft of the penis. And then at the distal portion of the penis, there's a large dilation of this tissue to form the glans penis. So if we're looking at the, uh, the cross section of the body of the penis, we can see there are corpora cavernosa here, which are superiorly or dorsally um, unified together. And then we can see ventrally, we've got the corpus spongiosum. And that is surrounding the spongy portion of the urethra. So recall the urethra is tripartite. There is the prostatic part of the urethra and then the membranous part of the urethra. And then the spongy part of the urethra gets that name spongy because it goes through the corpus spongiosum. The, uh, the penis and its erectile tissues are served by branches of the internal pudendal artery. Uh, we can see uh, some of them here. So these are the deep arteries of the penis. Um, uh, we can also see some of the dorsal arteries of the penis there. And the penis is like the rest of the perineum served by branches of the pudendal nerve. And again, nothing to be ashamed of here. So poor nomenclature on, on the part of ancient anatomists. So we've discussed the, uh, the complexity of the urogenital triangle with a particular emphasis on the superficial pouch in there, the erectile tissues found within the superficial pouch uh, and their derivatives, the muscles associated with those erectile tissues, and the blood supply and innervation of those tissues. This is your summary slide. I thank you for your time.